I'm Jared Fry, General Manager of Medina TV. Hi, and I'm Jacqueline Rinksmeyer, Executive Director of the Greater Medina Chamber of Commerce. The mission of the Chamber of Commerce is to serve our member investors and promote business interests through economic development, business advocacy, and member services, which benefits the Greater Medina community. The Chamber is funded by voluntary membership from the business community. It is a not-for-profit, non-partisan business organization and we do not receive tax dollars to operate the organization. The Chamber does not endorse candidates but strives to educate the voters on both the candidates and the issues. And we are pleased to partner with Medina TV to bring these interviews to you. This program would not be possible without this collaboration. So thank you to our interviewer, Jared Fry, and our producer, Matt Tomick. And as always, the views expressed in these interviews do not necessarily reflect those of Medina TV or the Greater Medina Chamber of Commerce. We thank you for tuning in to the 2022 Candidates Forum and remind you to vote on November 8th. Joining us now in studio is Colleen Swedek, the uh, current county commissioner running yes. for the county commissioner seat uh, once again uh, this November. So thank you and welcome for joining. Thank glad, you for joining us. Glad to be here. Uh, let's start off first. Uh, I'm sure most everybody already knows you just uh, from what you've done, but take a few minutes and, and for those that may not know you, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, I went to, um, I grew up in uh, Middlebrook Heights. I went to college at Baldwin Wallace College. I got a degree in finance and after college, uh, my early career was spent in banking before I became a mom. Um, my my first foray into um, elected officialhood was uh, I was Hinkley Township's fiscal officer, which my banking background really helped me in the transition to that position. And I was Hinkley Township f fiscal officer for 13 years. Um, I was the county recorder, which is running a department. It's an elected position, but it's running a department, sp one specific department of the county. And I was county recorder for 12 years. And that also kind of linked to my banking because when I was a banker. I was a mortgage loan officer and branch manager and the recorder's office de uh, deals a lot with deeds and mortgages so the transition to that job was good too and then after 12 years of being county recorder there was an opportunity to run for commissioner four years ago there was an open position and I felt the two, pre two previous positions helping to run a town and helping to run a county department had given me a good base to um, jump to county commissioner and see what I could do participating in all county operations. So. Now for the, the folks at home that may not know or haven't had the opportunity to walk into the county uh, commissioner's office, mm -hmm. uh, kind of explain what the role of the county commissioner is. Okay, and that's so funny that you asked that because I do get asked that a lot because there are other elected positions and we are in no way the bosses of other electeds, mm -hmm. uh, but what we are in charge of is the money and the facilities. So the county gets money in various ways through property taxes, fines, fees, enterprise funds, grants. We get we get money in, in many different ways and it is the county commissioner's responsibility to take all the monies and determine how to properly fund each department, how to properly fund the sheriff department, how to f properly fund the recorder's office, you know, the, the, uh, all the court operations. Every department and every board that needs to be funded by, through county monies, the county commissioners um, are in charge of distributing those funds. So every year in October, all the boards and the departments that are funded uh, through tax dollars, they come to us and have budget hearings and they give us um, you know presentations on their needs for the following year so they may have standard needs operational needs but they they may say to us okay well this year you know we need a, um, a software upgrade for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or this year our department needs six extra vehicles so the fact that we are fiscal conservatives and very good with the money when unforeseen circumstances come up we've planned for it we're ready for it and we determine you know how much money so once those departments have the money it's theirs to manage as they see fit mm -hmm. um, but the other main thing that we are responsible for is all the f facilities and the properties so um, you know the, the, from the courthouse to the jail to the county administration building we have many many properties many many biz, uh, buildings 
buildings and it is our job to make sure that those are all properly maintained not only for the public but also for our employees. Mm -hmm. Now with that I know you kind of said like you hand it off to the departments once you approve it and everything mm -hmm. of that nature but are there certain goals if uh, re-elected that you would like to try to see or well, pursue? Sure. Well we have 13 departments that that report directly mm -hmm. to the county commissioners that we run that do not have an elected. So sure, we always have goals. Um, we're you know we're gonna ribbon cut our courthouse, which was the first building that the county has built in over 25 years. So we're very excited about that. It's on time and under budget, and we didn't ask for any tax dollars. So we're very excited. When we move into that in December, um, then we'll kind of be in phase two of that project. Where then we'll renovate the 1841, the old building. Building, but we have to move into the new building first and along with that project we have a few other older buildings that we're looking at selling and moving departments so it's kind of you know the maintenance of um, moving departments to different buildings that maybe better suit their needs and and we are um, looking to um, you know maybe consolidate some older properties that we don't need anymore um, but we are always looking to be more efficient and more innovative. We just recently um, started a, a new a smaller department called our Records Retention Department so that all departments of the county, including the elected departments, can bring documents. You know, uh, right now um, they're, they're working on prosecutor's document where he has six months minimum worth of, you know, scanning and then shredding and disposing properly of documents. Documents. So the consolidation of that, so we save money on, on rental space, because we spend a lot of money on rental space for boxes of documents. Mm -hmm. So starting this department, it's a two-person department, it's going to be a very efficient thing, mm -hmm. where it would, um, all document uh, destruction and scanning to save forever will funnel into one area, and they can take care of that. So we're always looking for efficient things like that. We're looking to break off our uh, solid waste division from the um, sanitary engineer. He can focus then on water and sewer and the garbage and solid waste uh, department is going to be broken off. Um, so we're always looking for ways to be innovative, efficient, better use of tax dollars, streamline, and I will continue to look for those kind of projects for the next four years. Okay. What would you say are some of your uh, skills and leadership qualities that you've brought to the county commissioners and would continue to bring if reelected? Well, um, one of the things that I'm an ex absolute ex expert in is governmental budgeting. So 13 years as a fiscal officer of a, of a larger township, you, you, know, you are deep in the weeds of governmental budgeting. So with my banking background, I'm good with the money, and I and I can look at almost any department's appropriations and, and you know expenses and you know their projections and understand it all. But government governmental budgeting is is truly one of my expertise, and that's one of the very very important things about that the county commissioners have to handle. Yeah. Well, along those lines, I guess what what would be the biggest cost area for the county budget, and you know how would you uh, address any issues that would arise from that? Well, you know, projects are very expensive. Of course, the, the you know the engineer um, has very expensive road projects. The sheriff department has a, is a very large department, and he also has a jail to run. So we have some departments that um, are larger and can be expensive, but they're absolutely vital to the health, welfare, and safety of our community. So no matter what the costs are, you have to find a way to make sure that they happen. So that's why looking for efficiencies in other other areas and streamlining other areas becomes so important mm -hmm. because you're always going to have some departments that are just naturally more expensive and, and there's no way for reductions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you wouldn't be properly serving the community, you know, health, wolf, health welfare and safety. We mm -hmm. always focus on. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there, what are your views on government procurement? Uh, do you believe they can be improved? Uh, are there regional uh, solutions that may help reduce expenses? Absolutely. I, th that is one of the things that um, in my next term I, I would absolutely love to, you know, this term, you know, we had the courthouse, we had the fiber to the home project. Those were two of our huge projects that besides just running daily operations took up a lot of our time in my first term. But things like procurement, where uh, 
we have this department buying, you know, I'm just going to say Staples or Office Max mm -hmm. or, you know, d uh, different um, places, I would like to see our departments, including our elected departments, if we could all get together and, and look for efficiencies in buying from the same company, it, uh, all the way down to softwares, supplies, you know, even cleaning supplies, you know, if we're all buying from uh, the economy of scales idea where we're buying larger quantities to um, uh, use our funds more efficiently, I, ap I absolutely think that's a great goal. We have, um, in the last couple years, it, it, it's funny that you bring up the word procure, procurement because we call them, instead of credit cards, we call them procurement cards because, you know, governmental calling them credit cards. But we, there's so many things that you can buy online now um, through economies of scale and uh, good prices, it, things that you need to run governmental operations, that it was very difficult that some of the departments didn't have procurement cards where, uh, you know, if they could grab something and get it shipped to them very quickly. So so we are slowly now, we spent the last year or so, any department that wants, make a re they make a request and they get a procurement card so that they're able to buy things online now, which, you know, for many, for many items and for many products is the wave of the future. So again, efficiencies, but looking for those as economies of scale in procurement um, is absolutely a goal of mine. Mm -hmm. We're speaking with Colleen Swedek, uh, incumbent for the county commissioners seeking re-election this November. Uh, what what do you see as the biggest challenge that would face the county in this next term? Well, I always worry about, you know, now that we've hit some inflation and the interest rates are gone, going up, I worry about a natural domino of that sometimes a recession comes. Mm -hmm. So economically, we would have to plan for maybe reduced numbers. Uh, people now are... Um, you know, going to go to the polls and always ask for levy increases or levy renewals, and you want those to continue as um, so we we have the funds to take care of all the needs of the people. But I do worry as a recession comes, our sales tax dollars would be reduced if people are spending less money. Um, you know, sometimes people have a harder time paying their property taxes, and during a recession time, you can have delinquencies, which then you have less funds. So, you know, being being a governmental budget person who's always planning and always looking to the future on, on how we can do things, you know, for less costs, when, wherever we can and when, whenever we can um, is so important because potentially with this, these interest rates rising, the next step, I'm, I'm not trying to be an alarmist, but we have to plan for a recession because then we would be operating under reduced funds. Mm -hmm. We've had them during my tenure. In, in 2008, I was county recorder and the funds got so reduced that the county had to make a decision back then where every department had to reduce by 10%. Now 10% is significant to look at your budget and all your appropriations and say, but we did it. We all sat down, we did what we needed to do to get through the crisis. So if we did have another financial turnaround, the most difficult thing would be, would be managing the money and, and giving services with less dollars. How do you uh, do the balance when you're looking at a county? It's not like a, a city or a township. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the county as a whole. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you work the, the balance with the constituents from different areas around the county to make sure they're all served? Uh, you, you mean like the different departments? Well, even just whether it's handling how you do the departments, but just you as a commissioner, as you look at the whole, as you look to approve budgets or you look to approve any uh, items that may come on your agenda, mm -hmm. How do you weigh that balance of a township versus a city versus that reside within the county? Right. Okay. Well, they the townships and the cities are funded themselves, mm -hmm. so none of their funding. Some of the funds come through us that just go right back to them because we are the depository in some ways. Uh, but they they have their own individual property taxes. They you know get local government funds. Some of the cities get you know income tax, but they do have their own individual budgeting operations and so the things that we're serving potentially the townships for are road and bridge projects that the engineer is doing and the sheriff does cover many of the township areas for um, policing services so but as far as their budget goes those entities individually handle their own yeah I, I guess I should clarify I was mentioning for more from a constituent side as oh. you look at them as as 
do you look at it more as a county as a whole, or do you try to look out and say, you know, these constituents in a certain township or these constituents in a certain area may need something more than Oh, we absolutely have to look at them individually mm -hmm. because they all have individual needs. Mm -hmm. As, for example, when we got um, many of the ARPA funds, mm -hmm. uh, the county um, did get a, quite a lot of money through the ARPA funds. We had um, many of the villages and um, the townships come to us for different projects that they needed funding. Now we absolutely try to fund the ones that we feel, you know, water projects, you know, water and sewer projects, things where there were huge impact on the community. And we, you do have to look at um, a village or a township that has a specific need in a specific area that may be different from other parts of the county. So, no, they have to be looked at individually, and it's not always looking at just, some of the decisions are affecting every resident, but some of the decisions that you are making do affect mm -hmm. an individual entity, so, yeah. And I know there's been a lot of talk on the, the higher up levels, uh, you know, state and, and mm -hmm. some of the bigger offices about the, uh, the diverse, or not diversity, the uh, divisiveness between political parties and just politicians and just mm -hmm. opinions. Do you feel that translates down on the commissioner's level or is it a pretty good work environment uh, with the, the commissioner? The commissioner's office is actually a wonderful work environment because we represent everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, politics in, in our office um, does not come into play. We're making decisions about the welfare and um, safety and health for all the residents of Medina. We're lucky as far as political entity go, entities go that the three commissioners, we have a great working relationship with all three of our cities. We have a great working relationship with the six villages and the 17 townships. We have, everybody has our cell phone numbers. So, you know, I have township trustees who call me if they have an issue or a question or, you know, mayors. We keep in contact and we work together on different things. And the residents of Medina County can really, really rest assured that their government entities work together very, very well. And it doesn't matter what, what party anybody is. So I feel really good. And I know that's not that way in all parts of Ohio or in all counties, but in our county, it, it doesn't matter. The entities work well together and the political leaders work very, very well together. We're speaking with Colleen Swedek, candidate, uh, the, currently a county commissioner seeking re-election this November. Uh, what do you think are some traits or s things that just set you apart uh, from your opponent on the ballot? Wow, I don't really know my opponent very well. I've, I've only met her once, so uh, a comparison um, is difficult, so I think I'll just uh, talk about myself. I, I do have good relationships, and, and, and the business, it's not just the um, government or leaders that feel comfortable calling me, private sector CEOs and companies, if they have an issue, they feel comfortable uh, calling me and seeing if I can help, seeing if I can make a connection for them, seeing if I can help them make something happen that needs to happen for the betterment of the community. Um, so I do think people, people feel a comfort level in reaching out to me for help or a question or, you know, um, anything that's needed. So I, I like to continue that openness and, and, and my cell phone's always on my business card and, and I, I, I feel that I'm approachable so I think that does help. But I also do think um, the long-term planning as aspect of the way my brain works helps too because I always see the dominoes that are going to fall because sometimes you think you have a solution immediately but you do always have to think of the long-term dominoes that fall from a decision that you make and maybe your instant decision is not you know instinctively correct and you have to think it through and see the end outcome and I do think I'm very good at that. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Uh, I want to make sure I take a moment. Thank you for being part of the political oh, process. It. And thank you it. for letting me ask some questions and answering thank those. You. But I also want to give you the opportunity, in case there's anything I missed or anything you wanted to touch on to let oh, the no. voters or residents know, I can give you the mic and it's, it's yours. Okay. Um, each and every day that I've been an elected official, I always think to myself on almost every decision that I need to make that the tax dollars are yours and I think about how you would want me to spend them and how you, which services and which um, 
roads, which items out in the world, everything that is needed for the health, wealth, and health, welfare, and safety of the community. I think about how would you want me to spend your money, and I pay attention to those tax dollars every single day, and I will continue to protect you in that area. Thank you. So that's Colleen Swedek, our current county commissioner, up for re-election this November, and I want to wish you the best of luck uh, this November at election time. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. so good to be here. Great to have you.